Just two and a half years ago, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex sat down with Oprah Winfrey to air a slew of grievances and claims about the royal family that they had deserted. The most incendiary claim was that members of the royal family had raised, quote, concerns in multiple conversations about what skin colour baby Archie's skin would be. And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? About how dark your baby is going to be? Potentially, and what that would mean or look like. So hold up, hold up. There's Stop several right now. There are several conversations. There's a about conversation it. with you? With Harry. About how dark your baby is going to be? Potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Ooh. And you're not going to tell me who had the conversation? I think that would be very damaging to them. Okay. Compartmentalized they were conversations. they concerned that if he were too brown, that that would be a problem? Are you saying that? I wasn't able to follow up with why, but that if that's the assumption you're making, I think that feels like a pretty safe one. You see, that's just an allegation of racism right there. It's not ambiguous. That is Meghan Markle accusing a member of the royal family of being racist judging somebody according to the colour of their skin and how brown they are. There's no room for thinking it's anything else. Now, the impact of that claim was extraordinary. The claims were reported breathlessly across the world. Tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions, were left with the unavoidable impression that Britain is a racist country with races at the heart of our royal family. But just the fact that there is, according to both of them, this ongoing blatant racism, not only in the UK tabloid press, but in the family. But for some people in this country, a blanket denial of racism, like the one that we heard from Prince William yesterday, just isn't enough. Buckingham Palace racist. is it's racist. Racism. Because among the more shocking revelations was that it's sort of overt racism she faced within the royal family. But here it is, a couple that's truly in love. And the thing that you want to question is their skin tone. I hope all those people are having severe second thoughts or buyer's remorse about believing what Meghan Markle and Prince Harry said. I don't need to because that day I said I didn't believe a word of it and I had to leave my job because I didn't believe them, even though I think they were lying. Well, for two and a half years, there's been frenzy speculation about how, who these supposedly racist royals are. Just about every single member of the royal household has been implicated in the rumours at some point and that surely isn't fair, is it? Just guilt by collective association? Especially if you believe, as I do, as I've always said, that the claims, in my opinion, are completely and utterly baseless. That speculation reached fever pitch again this week because of this Weasley lickspittle Omid Scobie. He's the client journalist of the Sussexes. He's always the first to publish their Soviet-style official statements and defend their indefensible deeds. He's like that guy... Comical Ali. Do you remember him? Who fronted up for Saddam Hussein in the Iraq war and would literally say, we've got him on the run, as the American howitzers were coming over his head. Well, Meghan Markle famously denied briefing Scobie for his last book, Finding Freedom. But then she was forced a few months after it came out to apologise in court and admit that actually she had. She briefed one of her aides to go and tell Scobie all the, lin all the laundry. So when it emerged that the latest book contained new details on those race accusations, well, let's just say I've made my own assumptions about where Scobie could have got that information from, because it wasn't King Charles. So that only leaves the other person on the end of that correspondence. That's Meghan Markle, or maybe Harry, her husband, or maybe one of their mutual friends that Scobie keeps boasting he has. Scobie says he knew the names of the accused royals but couldn't use them for legal reasons. That's in the English version of his book. Then, as everybody now knows, the names suddenly appeared in a Dutch translation of the book. And by appeared, I mean they were sent to journalists who couldn't believe what they were reading. They went into bookstores where people could buy it. Well, last night I decided this was all ridiculous and it was time to name the two royals implicated in those racism claims, 
They are, as I said last night, King Charles, Prince Charles as he was then, and Catherine, the Princess of Wales. I did that for several reasons. First, the speculation was once again raging out of control, as it has for two and a half years. Second, it made no sense that Dutch journalists and Dutch people who bought copies before the publisher withdrew them would know these names, members of our royal family, when the British people were prevented from knowing them. Thirdly, once you know the names, it becomes blindingly obvious to anyone with even half a brain that these allegations are ridiculous. Whatever your view of the monarchy, I don't think any serious person really believes that anything they've seen or heard from King Charles or the Princess of Wales suggests they have even the tiniest racist bone in their bodies or would judge anybody according to the shade of their skin. And once again, it's worth remembering what Prince Harry eventually said about these accusations when he was promoting his book. And before we play the clip, just to remind you, after launching this racist bombshell two and a half years ago, it never got mentioned again, not in the six-part Netflix series, which mentioned everything else in their lives, not in the 12-part podcasts for Spotify that Meghan Markle did, never mentioned, and it never got mentioned in Harry's over 400-page book, 150,000 words of stuff about his entire life, but not a mention of the supposed racism by members of his own family, which he had launched as a missile against that family on Oprah Winfrey. So this is what he said to Tom Bradby at ITN at the start of this year when promoting the book where he didn't mention it. In the Oprah interview, you accuse members of your family of racism. You don't even... You really well. Of the British press said that. Right. I... Did, did Meghan ever mention that they were racist? She said there were troubling comments about yeah, Archie's skin colour. There was concern color. about his skin colour. Right. Wouldn't you describe that as essentially racist? I wouldn't, not having lived within that family. God, he's such a dimwit, isn't he? He's just dim as ditch water. He literally thinks we're going to watch the clips back from Oprah and not think that she was saying that the royal family had been racist. How dumb does he think we are? So Harry performs this dramatic U-turn. Oh, it was never... We never meant to suggest they were racist. It was the terrible British press. They were the ones who said it was racism. We just meant unconscious bias. You know what that's become a, a euphemism for? We actually haven't got any evidence of someone being racist. We just think it's kind of unconscious, on the sly, right? It's kind of there, but we can't prove it. It's like, we think they might be. Yeah, not good enough. Not when it comes to members of the royal family, whose reputations are on a global stage. So why should I stand back and let a proven liar like Omid Scobie, a man who claims in this book as a fact that I have regular phone chats with Queen Camilla? Regular. Do you know how many times I've spoken to Queen Camilla on the phone in my entire 58-year life? Zero. Not once. It's not just not regular. It's never happened. We've never had a phone chat. So he's a liar. And he lied again about when apparently I called Meghan Markle Princess Pinocchio on that fateful last day, Good Morning Britain. Apparently Camilla immediately contacted me to thank me on behalf of the firm. No, she didn't. Another lie. Complete lie. So Scobie prepared to lie about me, about these little things, which don't really amount, amount to a row of beans. Why should we believe anything else he has to say? All he's doing is dragging the whole royal family through the mud all over again reigniting these racism charges because he wants to sell books and make money. Well, Scobie gave another interview this morning, two this morning, in which he again denied working with Meghan Markle, and he also denied ever using the names in any draft of his book. I'm as frustrated as everyone else. I make it very clear in this book that I, in every way possible, want to adhere to the laws surrounding this subject. Mm. It's why I've been very careful in how it's described in the book. And it's why I've never spoken about it beyond what I've said in the public domain before. The reality is, though, is that this is information that is not privy just to me. A liar. A barefaced liar. He wants us to believe that he only submitted a draft in the English version, which never mentioned the names, but that somebody in the Netherlands got hold of it and added the names, and added entire paragraph in one part of this into the manuscript before it went to the printers. A lethal saboteur. 
Who would do that? Have you ever, ever met any author in history? Because I haven't. Who's had that happen to their manuscript? That on the way to the printers in a foreign country like the Netherlands, they got into the manuscript and changed it without the author knowing anything about it? No. It doesn't pass what we call the smell test. It's the Scobie stinks when it comes to the smell test. Now, he thinks I'm completely wrong to assume an earlier version of his book included the names and was sent for translation, only for his lawyers to take them out of the final edition, which I think is the most likely explanation. It's therefore rather inconvenient for him that the Dutch translator has told reporters tonight that she'd only translated what was written down on the manuscript. She said the names of the royals were there in black and white. I didn't add them. I just did what I was paid to do, and that was translate the book from English into Dutch. Now, at this point, the deafening silence from Harry and Meghan becomes a little more than deafening. It becomes pretty shameful, because they usually race to condemn and denounce any press reports that we dislike, particularly if it involves any leaks from private correspondence. And Meghan Markle, ironically, was forced to admit that she colluded with Omar Scobie on his last book in a court action she took against a newspaper over private correspondence with her father. So why have they remained so silent about Omar Scobie's lies and also about his leaking of the private correspondence between Meghan Markle and King Charles that contained these names? Is it because they were involved in him getting this information? Is it because, I don't know, the tooth fairy came down and did it, or Santa Claus, or for want of a better, a better third example, Pinocchio? The public can, of course, make their own minds up about all of this. It shouldn't take long. And the same goes for the baseless accusations of royal racism. Nobody, I repeat, really thinks King Charles or the Princess of Wales are racist. Nobody. That's part of the reason, actually, why I decided to put their names out there. It's called lancing the boil. It's called removing what has been a simmering threat deployed by Meghan and Harry and deployed by Omid Scobie as an unspoken threat. We've got these names, and if we, if we don't get what we want, we're going to use them. Well, now they can't do that. I've been at the sharp end of British journalism for 30 years. I've seen royal crises come and go. I remember after Diana died, everybody predicted that was the end of the monarchy. But it wasn't. The monarchy survived and it thrived with our great Queen Elizabeth II. And it's doing so again now with King Charles. He's doing a brilliant job as the head of our great royal family and the head of the great monarchy. The only crisis I think that we're facing at the moment, this end game, as Omid Scobie puts it, is an end game for Omid Scobie. And potentially, depending on how they respond to this, to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Because this morning, the Times newspaper, the paper of record in this country, the paper read by opinion formers, politicians, those who matter, said that it was time that King Charles removed the royal titles from a couple who seemed to want to destroy the royal family and the monarchy, but simultaneously make millions and millions of dollars by trading off their royal titles from an institution they keep trashing. That may well be the beginning of the end game for their royal duplicity.